In the last presentation, we completed our K map in which we used the don't cares. And uh, now it's very clear for you to understand how to solve the two, three, and four variable K map in which don't care is also involved. Now, in this presentation, we are going to cover another part of your K map, which is K map using max term. Basically, in this presentation, we are not going to group the ones, but we are going to group the zeros. This is sometimes very good to solve the problems. Let's see how. So, let me take the first example in this presentation. And in this example, in this example, a 8 cell K map is given to you. Okay, and the variables are A, B, C. A is your max term, C is your min term. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, now the entries are 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1 okay so this is the 8 cell k map given to you and uh, you have to find the function f by using these zeros till now what we were doing we were grouping this one so if i group this one i will make the this group which involves the four ones this is our prime implicant and the next group will be this one and uh, you know how to reduce them and write them as your function f but now in this presentation we are not going to group the ones but we are going to group these three zeros okay so let's see how we can group them the first group that we can make is this one we will give it name one and the second group we can make is this one in which also there are two zeros so this is all that we can do in this. We cannot group these three zeros because we know that the group can be of two zeros or two ones, four zeros or four ones and so on. So the function f is equal to one plus two. But remember one thing which is very important is that in this type of k map when you are grouping the zeros the function should be complement because the value of the function or the value of the output f is false what are the zeros and ones we are filling in this cell these are the values of your f that is your output when we group these ones it is true so we just write f with no complement sign but when we group zeros we have to give a complement sign here that is bar or dash so this is a common mistake that students do so just keep it in your mind that you have to write it as f complement okay now let's write what is the value of one it is a is not changing in the first group so i will write as a complement because a is zero b b is also not changing is zero here and again it's zero so i will write it as b complement and you can see that c is changing from zero to one so we are not going to write c in this one okay similarly in two a is a bar and uh, you can see that b is changing from zero to one so b is not written here and c is one so c and on the left hand side you are having f complement now we will use de morgan's law de morgan's law and we will take complement of the both side we'll take complement of the both sides so this thing will become f complement and again it's complement and the complement of whole right hand side you know f complement and then its complement is f and by using de morgan's law i hope you know what is de morgan's law we have completed it in the earlier lectures
So this is something we are going to get after applying the De Morgan's law. Now we have to use De Morgan's law again for this one and this one. So it will give us a this and operator will change to R and this complement B will be B. Okay. And this A complement will be A, the AND will change to R and the C will change to C complement. And this is your F. So as you can remember this thing, this thing is your POS form. This is product of the sums. There are two sums A, B, A, C complement and we are writing it as a product. Actually. Then th this is the name given, but actually there is nothing like the sum and nothing like the product. It's just a repre representation. It looked like our mathematical sum and then its product, but actually it's all operator and this is end operator. So this is how we can get our function by using the zeros and this is called as k map using max term. Now, if I simplify this by using the Boolean algebra, then you might be knowing what is the distributive law. I'm directly using it, distributive law. So by using the distributive law, it is A or B, C complement. And this is something you are going to get when you combine this one. So let's do that, the function F. Now I'm writing it as F, not as F complement like here because I'm combining the ones. So for this, one let's say this is one this is two for this one it is a simply because both b and c are changing and uh, for this two we are having b c complement b c complement because a is changing in this group from one to zero so you can see that these two things are same so there is no problem whatever combination you make by using zeros or by using ones but sometimes it's very helpful when you combine these zeros as you can see here we have to make the combination of the three zeros we have to combine the three zeros but here we have to combine five ones however the both things are simple but when you are having a K map having the 16 cells and let's say we are having 15 ones in it and one zero then you can simply write a zero okay so we will see some more example on this K map using max term in the next presentation which will make it more clear to you and I hope you got what it is in this presentation only. So thanks for watching and see you in the next presentation.